Hey guys, Crab Crusher here. It's been a while. How am I? Thanks for asking. Well, I've picked up a few new hobbies. Uh, first of all, I went bird watching. That is not a bird. And I went backpacking the other day. I even showered. But my favourite activity so far has to be dark magic. Watch this. Okay. Oh, actually, before we start, I think there's something behind your ear. Let me just. What? It's the Time Twister Hourglass from the Sparrow's Adventure Dark Light Crypt Adventure Pack. You know what? No more lies. I can't actually do dark magic. And I didn't get this for a good deal. I traded my kidney for it. Oh, you yeah, the segue. But at least they're spell punks. If you want some real magic, look no further than these mysterious magical beings. Whether they're healing, speeding up, or protecting, they are generally seen as support enemies, and appearing in almost every game, they are a very prominent species. Or... cult? I... I really don't know what they are. But the big question is... Which spell punk is the punkiest spell of them all? Well, conveniently, I'm here to answer that question. You are welcome. I'll be ranking these spell punks on how unique their abilities are, and how much they add to the challenge. I would say design is important, but they pretty much all look the same, so... Colour scheme? A few things before we start. If a certain spell punk is brought back in a later game, but has a different ability, then it will receive a separate placement on the list. I'm also bending the rules a little bit and including some enemies that aren't technically spell punks but have the same role as them. What are you gonna do? Sue me? Actually, please don't do that. With no further ado, let's do the thingy. Before we begin, a very honourable mention goes to the Crystal Masters. These Greebles go around evilizing creatures with their staffs. To my knowledge, you only see these guys in cutscenes, and you can't actually fight them. But if you could, I can imagine them evilizing other enemies like Greebles or Chompies, making the Crystal Master more of a priority to get rid of first. And that sounds like a very spell punky thing to do. He remains forever in our hearts. <laughs> At number 28, my least favourite spell punk, Broccoli Guy. This has to be the most pathetic imitation of a spell punk I have ever seen. The only reason Broccoli Guy replaced the life spell punk is because he has more of a personality which makes him more appealing as a villain. Little piece of advice, Bob. Having an annoying personality is worse than having no personality. Oh yeah, and he sucks at his job. He can only heal one enemy at a time, which takes years to charge, so chances are you'll have probably already killed the enemy before he could do anything. And even if he does manage to heal them, the amount of health is just embarrassing. And just to add on to that, he can't even attack you. This piece of veg can easily be ignored and it wouldn't make much of a difference, which is the polar opposite of the life spell punk. He is pretty helpful as a playable villain, but I have my blue juice anyway, so it doesn't matter. And not doing much better is number 27, Rage Mage. Rage Mage is a pitiful specimen. His fight is an abomination of game design as he only jumps into the battle after every other enemy is gone meaning that he can't do anything apart from run from you. I'm not even joking, that's the entire fight. When playing as him, he has a move that can buff your Skylander, which is cool I guess, but that fight has left an incredibly sour taste in my mouth. At least he couldn't ruin any existing spell punks, cause he isn't based on any of them. That's his only saving grace. At number 26 is the tech spell punk. I don't have any massive problems with this guy, he just feels pretty lazy. It feels like they didn't have any interesting ideas, but they had to have one of every element, so they made it anyway. At least its colours are pretty cool. Next up is the Fire Spell Punk from Sparrow's Adventure. This is a very forgettable spell punk. It's only in one level, and a bad one as well, and can create explosive barrels which it blows up. Only problem is you have to be right next to the barrel to even feel the warmth of the explosion, so you most likely haven't even been damaged by this guy, and you probably forgot it existed until now. The magic spell punk from Sparrow's Adventure kinda sucks too. For an enemy introducing the same level as this schmuck, it doesn't do a whole lot. 
It summons a magical orb which blasts you with an impossible to see laser. Okay, but what makes the orbs magical? The attack itself is pretty strong, but it will never hit you unless you're standing completely still. Even if it was a good attack, it's still boring anyway. At number 23 is the Armoured Life Spellpunk. I've only seen this enemy at the end of one level in one game. Hmm, wonder why. The armor that some enemies wear in Giants is so weak that you'll probably knock it off with one attack, which is stupid and makes this version of the Spellpunk pretty much useless. They also like to defy the laws of physics. Wish I could do that. The Water Spellpunk from Superchargers misses the point of Spellpunks entirely. Its snowball attack feels like something it should use when it can't help other enemies, but nope, this is all it does. It also isn't very dangerous either, you know, apart from in Spellpunk Library. Speaking of libraries, next up we have the Spellpunk Librarian, the final Spellpunk. I had no idea this thing existed until very recently. What can I say, it's a limited time boss in a crappy mobile game that isn't even playable anymore. His design is pretty cool though, and I will take any Spellpunk bosses that I can get. The Fire Spellpunks from Superchargers suffer from the same problem as the Water Spellpunks, except they're actually pretty scary. That stupid second fireball. They also just blatantly stole the colours from the Time Spellpunks, which I really, really don't like. And at 19 is the Water Spellpunk from Sparrow's Adventure. This one has an interesting concept, but it's executed quite poorly. It can summon water puddles that freeze you if you touch them. I like that being frozen doesn't damage you, and it only makes you more vulnerable to other enemies, but you're for some reason invincible when frozen, so what's the point? At number 18 is Maskermind. I quite like its ability to resurrect enemies that you've killed, but then when you play as him, he can only hypnotise enemies. That's not what you just did in your own cutscene. In fact, there's no indication that Maskermind can even hypnotise people apart from this stupid quest. So the question is, why on earth did they make it as a villain when it can't do the one thing that it's known for? That's pretty dumb. Next up is the undead spellpunk from Spurs Adventure. This one uses satanic rituals to grow Rue Babies into Rue Barbs, which are much harder to deal with. They can also spawn their own Rue Babies, which I only found out about because of a glitch. It's a pretty fine spellpunk, but I wish it had more versatility. It works on the Rue Babies, sure, but nothing else. And the Trogmander is practically identical to the Undead Spellpunk, and I like it a tiny bit more because look how goofy it is. Gotta love this guy. At number 15 is the Earth Spellpunk. Ugh, I have some weird, inexplicable love for it. Maybe it's the juicy colours? Maybe it's because no one cares about it when it deserves love? Yeah, I think this might be a lost thing. It's funny that I love it so much, because it literally does nothing. It doesn't block melee attacks like I thought it did, it doesn't even increase enemy defence. Literally useless. Yeah, your eyes don't deceive you, it is giving these enemies like little rock barrier things, but believe me, it affects nothing. But hey, I still love it, and I will happily defend its existence until I die. Next up is the Air Spellpunk from Spurs Adventure. This one sort of works like the Air Spellpunk, except this one actually does a thing. It casts a wind barrier upon any enemy nearby, which makes them invincible to projectiles, forcing you to attack close range. It's a pretty cool idea, and I'm sure the robot uses are mad. At number 13 is the Raven Summoner, exclusive to Trap Team 3DS. This Spellpunk clone shoots orbs at you, and occasionally speeds up any enemies in its area, along with summoning buzzer beaks. These guys have a decent amount going on, but its gameplay is not really why I like it. It's the fact that they have stupid Spellpunk shaped robes which look hilarious. Also, screw you for making me play this game. Next up are the Spellpunk Civilians. While I do like Spellpunk Library, it did feel pretty empty. The developers clearly had huge plans for the level with tons of concept art and scrapped content, and these little guys were one of them. It would have added so much light to the level to have spellpunks flying around and reading books. Reality is often disappointing. And now we have Birdo Chesterfield. Well, I am pleasantly surprised by this Trap Team 3DS villain. Ah, huh, well, uh, I, I guess it's the first time for everything. 
Even though this is the villain version of the Raven Summoner, they have very different designs which is a good thing for a game with such boring villains. And he even has a new attack where he fires buzzer beaks as projectiles, which is cool since most of the villains in this game are exactly the same as their enemy counterparts. The only thing that I'd change about the boss is the lack of enemies present apart from the buzzer beaks that he summons. Not making great use of his ability to power up enemies, I'll be honest. Also screw you for making me play this game. At number 10 is the Blitzer Bully. It has a little life spell punk on his back that is freaking adorable. Well deserved 10th place, good job. In 9th place is the Air Spell Punk from Swap Force. This spell punk provides enemies around it with a massive speed boost. Whilst I do like the original version, this version is less situational and it affects any type of Skylander, not just projectile based ones. It also shoots tornadoes at you when they could have easily just given it a generic light blue coloured orb. I have to respect that kind of detail. In 8th place is the Metal Mage, the infamous scrapped enemy that was accidentally left in Mystic Mill. This is the only Spellpunk clone that works better than the original Spellpunk. Because the original didn't work at all. He summons a protective bubble around an enemy, which protects them from any damage coming from outside the bubble. While I can't say if it would have been a good playable villain, this guy's pretty cool, and I think they should have properly kept him in the game. At number 7 is the Undead Spellpunk from Swap Force. It's able to summon undead trolls or greebles. This one does a fine job. Not much else to say, but it's pretty cool. At number 6 we have the Water Spellpunk from Swap Force. This is probably the most obscure spellpunk from the mainline games, as it's only seen in two of the bonus missions in the game. And yes, it has a completely unique and pretty good ability. It gives other enemies this frosty aura, and if you hit one of these enemies, then you'll be frozen. Something about this is just really interesting. I wish it was in the actual game, or at least in some more of the missions. In 5th place is the Time Spellpunk. This is the only expansion pack exclusive spellpunk, and believe it or not, you find it in the Tower of Time. That is, that is just insane. As you would expect, being able to freeze time makes the combat pretty easy, but throw this thing into the mix, and now it's not quite as simple. As soon as you try to freeze time, the spellpunk will automatically undo that. Meaning that when you're up against some enemies like the Clock Gear Golem, who can only be damaged when frozen, you will literally have to get rid of the time spellpunks first. It can interrupt you in the platforming sections too, which is actually quite annoying. But hey, at least they're consistent. Overall, a cool ability that fits well with the level. In fourth place is the Metronome. This guy's ability is also specific to his level. The metronome speeds up the tempo of the music, and since some of the enemies in Thumpawampa Islands attack to the beat of the music, this makes them significantly faster. And just like the time spell punk, it can affect other parts of the level as well. I have to admit, I just love this guy, and it's a clever idea. And also, a very clever name. Well done guys. Well done. Getting today's bronze medal is Spell Slamzer. Back when Superchargers came out, it was so damn cool to finally get a Spellpunk boss. The battle has so many memorable parts, like when Spell Slams are splits into tons of different Spellpunks when you damage him, or that section where he takes you to a different dimension, it's all really good stuff. Sadly, it is incredibly easy, but it's still a very unique fight with some great music, so I do appreciate the effort. That's a pretty bad name though. Today's runner up is the Life Spellpunk. Call me basic all you want, this is an absolute classic. If you count Broccoli Guy, it's appeared in all 6 of the games, because it is a perfect supporting enemy that mixes up the combat. The Life Spell Punk is really good at its job. It will straight up stop you from killing any enemies, and it's great at hiding behind large groups too, making it that little bit harder to get rid of. And in Giants, they even say healing when they're healing. Healing! How could you want to kill this? That's so cute. Truly a flawless, timeless thing. Look, I, I still don't know what they are. No one's telling me. They also heal sheep, implying that they're enemies. Hugo was right and the evidence was here all along. Getting today's first place is the magic spellpunk from Swap Force. They did it. They actually did it. They made him magical. And it turned out pretty damn good. Can we take a step back and just admire the concentrated genius that went into this ability? Being able to turn enemies invisible is not only fun and visually interesting, but it also adds a ton of challenge to every fight. 
it is a crying shame that he was introduced in the last level of the game. What were they thinking? I'm just glad that they got the magic spell punk right eventually. Brings a tear to my eye. In conclusion, I had to play chat team on the 3DS to make this video. So it's been a colossal failure. That's all you're getting. I'm, I'm too upset to give you any other ending. That's it. End the video.